Welcome back everybody. I know some of you have noticed this shipping container that's sitting behind my sawmill. And some of you have also asked about it in the comments. And I have hinted a few times that one day I would show you what's inside. Okay, I didn't hint, I told you I would. Well, that day has finally come. Let's take a look inside. Voila, or as the French and everyone else pronounces it, voila. For those who watched one of my last videos, you know that I built a wood-fired kiln out of an RV trailer. After that started falling apart, I turned this shipping container into a kiln. I wasn't drying lumber, I was drying decorative tree branches which I was exporting around the world, which is another story in itself. But with a few modifications, I think this one would be suitable for lumber too. Let's go around the other side. I'll show you the wood stove side. Instead of buying a used container, I bought a new one. What they call used containers are the ones that the shipping lines have retired. There's usually a reason why they retired them. What they call the new ones are the ones that are used once, then they sell them. They're usually in very good condition, like this one. They're also more expensive. I didn't want to cut a hole in the back of a nice container to put the wood stove into. I needed to be able to load the branches on that end and then be able to feed wood into the wood stove on this end. My solution to that was to get one with double doors. Doors on each end of the container. Okay, so this one is a little bit of a redneck contraption too but not nearly as much as the RV kiln was. I'll put a link to that video in the description. My original plan was to have the stove out here, then I'd build a shroud around it to where the heat would go up into the container. But when my other kiln fell apart, I was in a little bit of a rush to get my order out, so I very quickly came up with this contraption as a temporary solution. And like a lot of temporary solutions, if they work good enough, you just tend to keep using them. One of the big problems with the RV kiln, learn how to stand, almost just tipped over. One of the problems with the RV kiln was it was not well insulated. I knew I wanted this to be well insulated. This is a two by six, full dimension, two inch by six inches. These two by six studs make up the interior walls. I believe I did 24 inch centers. This is the OSB, which makes up the interior walls. Between this OSB and the wall, I have six inch bat insulation. So I have six inches of insulation on both walls and the same in the ceiling. After I built that, I had to figure out how to put the wood stove in here and fill this wall up with something that wasn't going to burn. I just stacked cinder blocks around the stove. The idea is if they were just stacked in there loose, then when I decided to put the stove outside, I could use those for building the structure around it which never did happen. Up here, I just took a couple pieces of metal roofing, screwed both sides to a piece of metal stud, and sandwiched heat-resistant bat insulation in between, and cut a hole in it for the stovepipe. Here's part of the stovepipe which goes in, and I don't know where the rest of it is. This is the same wood stove I used on the RV kiln. It's a jacketed stove. The air goes in here, heats up, and then rises out the top. In the RV kiln, I had it open underneath the stove. What happened in that kiln is the heat would rise up from the stove, go inside the kiln and circulate, and then the cooler air would come out the bottom. That cooler air coming out the bottom would bring the moisture out with it. When I put these blocks together, it came out to where I had this hole in there. I didn't have enough half blocks to fill it up. My thought was if I just left it open like this, this would do like it did in the RV, the cooler damp air would come out of there and it would create a circulation through the kiln. We're just out on undeveloped forest land. There's no power here, it's off grid. Ideally, I'd have a fan inside, but it's a little bit difficult here. But I was hoping just natural circulation would do it. But what I found, most of the air 
would come out right here between the blocks and this. It might work better if I was to seal up some of the cracks here to encourage the air to come out of here instead. If I had a fan here that was blowing air out, that would probably help too. Let's go look at the wood stove from the inside. Quick view of the inside. This hole was for the damper control. I just stuffed a piece of insulation in there as a temporary fix that ended up being permanent. Single walled stovepipe, then double walled going through the wall. Everything in that hole is heat resistant. Like I said before, the walls, two by six studs, 24 inch centers, six inch bat insulation between walls and in the roof. The studs to build this was the first lumber I cut on my mill. The question then was what to use for the sheathing. This was early 2021 when the price of OSB shot up to ridiculous. Well, just a year or two before, I tore apart a shed I had that was made out of OSB. I almost threw all those sheets away thinking this stuff is only six, eight dollars a sheet. If I want more, I'll just go buy more. But when it came time to build this, I was so glad that I kept all these sheets and I could use this stuff that I already had instead of paying $80 a sheet for all of this. The sun is too bright out here to show you the door jams. I'll have to come back and shoot this part of the video after the sun changes where it's at. Now it's the next morning. Now I can show you how I did the doors without having to deal with the sun and the shadows. I just put a lip all the way around. for the doors to push up against. I put this seal on here that was made for smokers. That worked out very well, except in this corner, the way the door shuts, it's getting tore apart. I put this block on the door. So when the container door is shut, it pushes the door tight against the seal. Ideally, I would have some kind of a lip on this door for the other door to seal up against. But I didn't do that and I don't remember why I didn't do it. I think it may have been I was just in such a hurry to get this thing up and running. What I ended up doing was stuffing a couple towels in between the two doors to seal it off, thinking that would be a temporary solution until I came up with something better. And as with temporary solutions, a lot of them end up being permanent solutions because we just never get around to fixing what's working. And when I got to the exterior doors, all I had were these pieces of OSB left. I just patched these together thinking I would eventually replace them when the price of OSB came down. And the studs inside these doors, I think I cut those at an inch and a quarter by five and a half to make them lighter, then stuffed the six inch insulation between the studs. I just put on the hinges that I happen to have. As they're starting to wear out, the door is sagging and they're getting a little hard to open. There's one thing I knew was going to be a problem with the way I built this, and that's moisture condensing on the container walls. I decided to do it this way anyway and figure one day I'm going to have to face the consequences. The base here, you can see where moisture has been building up. Eventually it's going to rot the frame out. In the beginning, when the wood has a lot of moisture in it, there's a lot of moisture built up. But by the time the cycle's done and everything's dry, it does dry out down there. It is a problem, but I think there'll be many years of good use before we have to do something about that. I think that's about it for the doors. Now I'll send you back to yesterday where we'll finish the video. I wanted it to get up to at least 170 degrees Fahrenheit to kill any bugs that were in the branches. If it could be 170 down low and up to boiling or hotter up above, that would be fine. Unlike with lumber, with the branches, I didn't have to worry about case hardening, cracking, warping, and all of that. It's actually good if they get hot because that just boils the water right out of them. It was able to get up to temperature, but it just didn't seem like it was that much more efficient than the RV trailer, even though it was much better insulated. We'll go outside to the other side and I'll show you what I discovered. In each corner, 
there's a hole right here. There's one on the other side too. I noticed a lot of, there's a big spider in there. At the time there was no spider in there because there was a lot of hot air coming out of that hole. Both of those holes, a lot of hot air. So the inside just was not sealed well enough. Since I am only an amateur carpenter, which might be a stretch, probably more accurate to say I'm not a carpenter at all, some of this construction may not have been 100% plumb and square. May not have been. Some of the seams may not have come together as nicely as I would have liked, especially up in the corners and some of the seams along the ceiling. What I ended up doing is getting some high temperature caulking and sealed up all the cracks up where it looked like it could be leaking. I ran out of the high temperature caulking, so I just put some regular tub and tile in there. Not sure if it would handle the heat, but mostly it all held up well. After I did that, there was a dramatic difference. The heat coming out of those holes was minimal. The temperatures in here got a lot hotter with less fire. I didn't have to use nearly as much wood to keep this thing up to temperature. After running it for a few days, after the moisture was all out of the branches, I could get it up to 250 degrees up here and have it pushing 200 down here. Well hot enough to do what I needed to do. I was questioning whether the OSB would even hold up to those temperatures. I looked online to see what temperatures they can withstand. Some things I saw said, yes, it will handle those temperatures. Some things said it might not. There's a slight bit of sagging in the ceiling in a couple spots, but hardly noticeable. I don't know if that was because of the heat or because somebody didn't put as many screws in it as they could have. And the purpose of these boards along the side of the wall is a rack system. Some of the branches I had were big heavy ones they could stack on top of each other. Other ones were more delicate, so I could stack some branches here, then have another level for our branches up here. Then of course, one down here too. I could also put them on the floor, but the floor just didn't get hot enough. That's why a fan or something to circulate the air would be really helpful in here. But it was about maybe just a little under these. From there up it is the useful space in here without using a fan. Unless I was to get it really, really hot in here. I have enough boards down here to rack the whole length of the container and stuff it full of branches. All the way up here, but not so close that they would catch on fire. I haven't used this kiln in over a year. Exporting decorative branches was a profitable business, but I was doing 40 foot shipping container quantities, which meant I needed a lot of branches. Finding people who wanted to buy the branches from me was no problem. Finding people who could reliably supply me with the raw material, that's the part that was difficult. I could find people who could supply me with the raw material, but not people who could reliably do it. It was always difficult finding people to reliably do physical labor. But once the labor shortage started, it went from difficult to just too difficult for me to want to continue. Now the question is, what to do with this kiln? If I was cutting high-end hardwoods, it would make sense to kiln dry lumber. But I'm cutting softwoods, mostly dug fir. I prefer selling it green. And a lot of customers just don't care if it's dry or not. If I was to take the time to stack and sticker it, kiln dry it, I don't know that there would be enough value added there to make it worth it. As long as I can sell it green, I prefer doing it that way. But I have a really nice kiln here. What do you guys think I should do with it? If I could somehow figure out something to heat or dry in here, or do I just not use it as a kiln and turn it into something else? Well, that's about all I can think of to show you on here. If there's anything else you want to see, let me know. If there's enough suggestions, I could do a follow-up video, although I don't know how much deeper we can get into this thing. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.